This is counterfeit money. Counterfeiting began a few minutes after the first appearance of currency in the world. It's been going on ever since. It goes on today, but at a rapidly declining rate. The reason for the decline is the efficiency of the United States Secret Service. A branch of the Treasury Department, the Secret Service is made up of intelligent, conscientious men who work quietly, anonymously, and with lightning effectiveness. Because of their constant vigilance, it is almost impossible for a counterfeiter to remain in business very long without being caught. Sometimes it takes violence, sometimes arrests are made peaceably. Seldom do they fail. Yet despite all the efforts of their vast organization, there was one counterfeiter who eluded the Secret Service longer than any other in their history. He was known as case number 880. As years went on, and it became the oldest unsolved case, they began to refer to it, in good-natured respect for a skillful adversary, as Mr. 880. The responsibility for his apprehension fell to the most active of the many Secret Service offices in the country, the one in New York. Because 880's activities were so aggravatingly unprofessional, he had them stumped. To add to their chagrin, the bills he produced were ridiculously inept. Gallagher, if you were a shopkeeper, would you accept that as legal tender? I'd have to be blind. Now and then, when patients ran out, they would call in a troubleshooter, an agent from one of their other offices. This time, it was Steve Buchanan from the Los Angeles office. So far, he's averaged less than $50 a month. Can't say the man's been greedy. I guess that's why he's been tough to catch. Of course, what's tougher is the $1 bill. We'll never educate people to examine $1 bills. Obviously, he's an amateur. Common bond paper, I think he can buy in any stationery store. Take a good look. <laughs> this is practically insulting. In the past 10 years, when we've been looking for that pest, this office has arrested and convicted 1,385 counterfeiters. We've broken up some of the most vicious gangs. You don't have ever... to sell yourself to me, Thad. Uh, I'm just selling myself to myself, I guess. That's what 880 does to you. Let me ask you a question. You've evidently covered every angle and followed up every lead. What makes you think I can crack this? I don't. The idea came from Washington. Washington? Yes. The chief thinks we've gone stale. Thinks it needs a fresh mind. Somebody with patience and determination. He suggested you. Well, after four months with the butcher boy, this might come under the heading of fun and frolic. I warn you, it won't. Look, if you want out, Steve, I can fix it. Let me kick it around for a couple of days. I might hit on an angle. A couple of days, huh? We've been working on it for 10 years, Steve. Yeah, I know. OK. Remember, I warned you. I know you're busy, but I'm rechecking all the people who got stuck. Yours was one of the first bills reported. You haven't had any hunches since then as to who it might have been. Well, that was 10 years ago. <laughs> mean to say you never caught that guy? Nope. I got no hunches, mister. 10 years? Hey, what have you guys been doing all this time? Playing pinochle? I'll tell you one thing sure, I'll never get hooked again. No, sir, not me. Why, you could call me an exploit on money. Yes, you could. Whose picture's on a $10 bill? A uh, $10? Sure, that's easy. A president of some kind. Let me see. I should know that one. Here, read this. Tells you how to spot counterfeit money. Morning, Gus. Hiya, Skipper. Same thing, huh? Mm-hmm. Here's your change. Thank you. Thank you. Did you see this? What's that? A miniature spinning wheel. Don't look practical to me. 
not practical. Okay, Skipper. Sure. Thought you examine all bills. Why, the Skipper's an old friend of mine. Skipper, how's the junk business? Junk? What do you mean, junk? I deal only in antiques. <laughs> I'm coming. Oh, Skipper, it's beautiful. For your mantelpiece. Simply beautiful. My grandma had one just like it. Full size, of course. How much is it? Hmm? Oh, three dollars. Three dollars? Oh, it must be worth much more than that. What did it cost you? Me? Pleasant walk. Argument with Rosie. Two dollars in cash. Oh, that's quite an investment. Here's five dollars. Keep it. to dig up a mate. Heavens, I'll be late. Skipper. Thank you. Keep your door open, Skipper. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. oh! You old rascal. Ah. Your door was open. I came in. Why, bless my soul. It's Doc Duff. Glad to see you, Doc. You still owe me that $20 I came to collect. Twenty dollars? Yeah, for your dog. I cured him of distemper. Maybe you've forgotten it, but oh, I haven't. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a fine job you did, too, Doc. Yes. And this dog's got a heart full of gratitude. Has he got twenty bucks? Ha, <laughs> ha. That's a good one. That is. No, he hasn't. But I have. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry they've kept you waiting, Doc. And I really forgot all about it. Oh, oh go away, please. Go on. His name's please. <laughs> Funny thing about that. I started out being polite to him. Now he's spoiled. Won't come unless you say please. <laughs> mm, doggone it. I must have spent that money. Yeah. Oh, here. Here's five dollars on account. I'll let you have the rest I of I don't want five. I want what you owe me. Well, I'm sorry, but I haven't got it at the moment. Why don't you sell some of this junk here and pay your debts? Oh, I couldn't do that. They're old friends. Don't you worry. You get paid, Doc. Come back in a couple of days. I give you my word, in a couple of days... I you... had your word last time. You handed me a cock and bull story about getting it from a rich cousin or somebody. Oh, no. That's no cock and bull story. But you see, I... I don't like to go to Cousin Henry. Except in an emergency. Well, this is an emergency, Mr. Miller. If I don't get that money in the morning, you'll hear from my lawyer. Marla. 
Now, that's a shame. We shouldn't have kept that poor man waiting. Well, looks like we've got to go to Cousin Henry after all. Come on. Thank you, Henry. Kingsbridge Heights. Kingsbridge Heights. Norwood. Norwood. Well, so far, so good. The subway runs all through here. Any bills turned in by the IRT? Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, here's another one. I'm convinced he still lives in that same neighborhood. Le when he went to Staten Island, we had one from the ferry. Last week, he was in Flatbush. Flatbush. The bill was reported by the BMT. Hey, that's pretty clever. Give me the next batch, Gallagher. Dad, why don't you save the boy some heartbreak? He's planning to stalk the beast in his original lair. That'd be foolish, I suppose. A sheer waste of brilliant manpower. Another 880 was just reported. From a taxi stand down off Washington Square. The driver, here's his name, knows exactly who gave it to him. He does, huh? Looks like the beast is still down there, Mac. What a break. Gallagher, put that stuff in the fire. Think you'll need any help? Could use some. Mac, go along with him. Come on, chum. With your brains and my luck, this will be a breeze. Please, Thad. I've given a whole year of my life. Come on. I checked over at the house. That's her name, all right. Ann Winslow. Ann Winslow. Huh? Yeah. There she is now. Come on. She wants a cab. Not you. Go ahead. Why don't she give me another phony? Take it. Say, look, I'm out one buck already. This one's on me. Taxi driver, silver, silver. Look out now, here she comes, she comes. See that bill you just got? That bill you just got, let's see it. You learn to spot this stuff. I'll give you a receipt for it. Counterfeit 
coins are greasy. You don't bite them, you feel them. Here. Carlos, there's a rush on. Here she comes now. I finished it, Mr. Beddington. Oh, you did? Good. I typed half the night and I told Carlos there was a rush on it. Oh, fine. Thanks, Anne. Where's, uh, where's Jack? Jack? En prenant la parole, Je tiens d'abord à souligner que je suis en parfait accord avec les déclarations que vient de faire mon honorable collègue. Et maintenant que l'on m'a demandé ce qu'il faut penser des problèmes d'une Europe à unifier, j'ajouterai que ces problèmes ne peuvent certainement pas être minimisés, mais ne doivent pas non plus être aggravés par une présentation erronée des faits et des idées. Les ne sont pas seulement constitués par des habitudes toujours difficiles à changer, surtout lorsqu'elles sont Here are your Il est un fait que c'est à la base même de ces difficultés que nous désirons tous ici réduire à un strict minimum de manière à aboutir à cette réalité, une Europe unifiée. C'est de permettre à nouveau aux citoyens moyens de n'importe quel pays d'Europe de voyager librement pour gagner sa vie comme il l'entend, quand il le veut et comme il le veut. Ai-je besoin de rappeler qu'il y a fort peu d'années encore, cette statue de la liberté dont nous sommes si près représentait encore... If that chick's 880, she must have started counterfeiting in grammar school. I'd say in about the sixth grade. Who said she was 880? There's a pretty good chance, though, that she could lead us right to him. Oh? Could she? We got two choices. We either shadow the lady or we cultivate her. And you like cultivating her? Naturally. On your toes, Mac.
one cocktail. There's no percentage in being a knight in armor anymore. Poor Sir Lancelot. At least drink it slowly and make it last. I, I don't want to seem ungrateful, but I was quite prepared to deal with the situation myself. You would have been half as effective. <laughs> Perhaps not. What's your name? Anne Winslow. But at least I would have found out where a thing like that leads to. I can tell you. No, thanks. I'd rather be surprised. Who are you? Anyone special? Special? I mean, do you work at anything? Or... Oh, I'm a French interpreter at the United Nations. Well... Would you believe it? This is the first time a thing like this has happened since I've been in New York. I was beginning to wonder about myself. Well, don't tell me you haven't even been whistled at. Oh, yes, lots of times, but it's not the same. It's too impersonal. I see what you mean. Oh, yes, I've been whistled at. Matter of fact, I've done some whistling of my own. In a quiet, ladylike way, of course. What's your name? Buchanan. Steve Buchanan. Are you anyone special? Just someone out to make a fast buck. <laughs> Who isn't? Well, I didn't mean that. Neither did you. A fast buck implies dishonesty. Doesn't it? Uh-huh. What's the matter? Why? Well, you were staring at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a habit I picked up in New York. I stare at people. I keep thinking they look familiar. It comes from seeing too many unfamiliar faces. Well, that's not as twisted as it sounds. You see, in a small town, each face has a definite association. It's clearly pigeonholed in your mind. Here, a million of them get mixed up in a crazy sort of... Every day, I nod to a familiar face I never saw before. I bet if you had one more drink, the whole thing would become as clear as a bell. Mmm, you might get more muddled. When you were staring at me before, do you know what I was hoping? What? That you were whistling. In a quiet, ladylike way, of course. Well, I said I was hoping. Well, perhaps I will have another drink. Great. Things are picking up for good old Lancelot. Between dances, they play soft violins at your table. Would you like that? I'd like it. Here it is. Tomorrow evening, 7.30. Good night. Good night. No, they didn't see the cause of it all, you'll forgive me. I'm sorry, I forgot. I hope you haven't been waiting long. Well, about an hour, it doesn't matter. I'm terribly sorry. This friend of mine, we just happened to bump into each other. This friend of yours certainly does a lot of bumping in the course of a day. Here it is. There are three copies. He almost knocked me over this morning. Mr. Buchanan? He hit me so hard, I thought it was deliberate. I realize now he probably was in such a hurry to catch up with you. What do you mean? It was in the lobby this morning, right after I left, you remember? This morning? He certainly made a beeline for the door. Apparently he did catch up with you. Good night. I beg your pardon, but I was here yesterday. Oh, yes, of course, I remember. And I was curious to know what happened when the policeman... Oh, nothing. He didn't arrest him. Seems he was with the Treasury Department. Treasury Department? Yes, Secret Service agent. He showed the policeman his credentials and he let him go. I thought his behavior was rather strange. Thank but... you very much. Not at all. Thanks so much. Bye. Rector 2, 9100. Mr. Beddington. Federal office?
Office Building, Secret Service Division. Steve Buchanan, please. I Thank you. Would you take this to 44, please? Buchanan speaking. Hello? Hello? Oh, ask him to send it right back. Yes, sir. Hello? Mr. Bennington, when I applied for this job, wasn't I thoroughly checked? Of course you were. Why? Can you think of any reason why the United States Secret Service would be after me? Oh, they'd have nothing to do with your job here. I met a man yesterday, and I just found out he's a Secret Service agent. The two chief functions of the Secret Service are to guard the president and catch counterfeiters. I'm safe in assuming you're not the president. I'm suspected of being a counterfeiter. Oh, chances are a counterfeit bill fell into your hands. You passed it on to someone who reported you. It happened to a friend of mine once. They watched him for a few days, and decided he was innocent, and suddenly dropped him. Never heard from him again. You'll probably have the same experience. Thank you. He's a very attractive man. I don't think I'd like to be dropped so suddenly. Me? Mm -hmm. You're the man girls whistle at. I had a bad day, not one whistle. Good evening. A vision, a veritable vision. Thank you. I'm just about ready. Make yourself at home. I'll be with you in a minute. All right. Even to the death, as though you were my blood, in all your quarrels will I be your knight. Lancelot said that to Elaine. Yep. That's the girl he ditched. He did. <laughs> By golly, you're right. And I spent hours last night trying to memorize it. <laughs> You know, I just thought of the first two lines of a limerick. I like limericks. There once was a fellow named Lancelot, whose girlfriends insisted he danced a lot. He... <laughs> <laughs> 
If that's a hint, I'll try to control myself. Well, I won't know till I finish the limerick. It may turn out he's a fiend for dancing. <laughs> It's not real, is it? What? What'd you think it was, a boodle of queer? I mean, it's perfectly obvious what it is. Is there any more wine? A boodle of queer, huh? Excuse, please. I came to ask if there is a special number. Oh, merci. C'est très gentil à vous d'être venu me trouver. Voulez-vous me jouer un air avec uh, beaucoup de sentiments, par exemple? Hold me. Madame, c'est un plaisir. Merci. He's going to play Hold Me. It took a heap of yucking to make that deal. <laughs> you having fun? Mm-hmm. I'll bet you are. Waiter. Would you mind if I made a phone call? Not at all. Would you mind if I powdered my nose? Why, not at all. This is the third time he's played Hold Me, waiting for us to dance. Well, let's not disappoint the man. How did you find out who I was? I believe you told me. Steve Buchanan, isn't it? A boodle of queer. The word boodle hasn't been used since the Civil War. Really? Now, I wonder how I came to use it. You found it in a book published in 1870 that you took out of the library this morning. This came off your Michigan bankroll. It's good American currency. You made a big show of looking guilty. Why? Well, it seems silly that you'd suspect me of counterfeiting. I thought I'd give you ample cause. You weren't very good at it. I suppose I could be arrested for flouting the law. Yes, you could. Shall we go now? Or um, shall we finish the dance? I'll call the shots. Until further notice, you're being held in technical custody. Has two of his bills. Where did you get them? Aren't you ruling me out as a suspect too soon? I never rule anybody out. I'll assume for the time being they fell into your hands by accident. How? I don't know. Think back over the past week. What did you do? Where'd you go? Let me see. I generally ride the subway, except in business, and then I take a taxi. I have lunch in the cafeteria, tea in the coffee shop. Twice a week, I shop at Macy's and Saks and go to a little bookstore on Madison Avenue. Every Friday, I have my hair done. And on Tuesday... I want you to remember where you got $1 bills in change. I haven't the faintest notion. just for us. I'm terribly sorry, Steve. I honestly don't remember. But, Mac, for ten years he followed a definite pattern, going from one section of the map to another in regular order. Here, let me show you. Now, Flatbush was his last stop. His next should be Borough Park, then Bay Ridge, and then Benson. What about the girl, Steve? Are you through with her? She's under constant surveillance. Now, I went to Borough Park just yesterday, and the first express stop there is Webster Avenue. You'd need 30, 40 men to cover a whole neighborhood. Ah, not necessarily, Mac. You see, we found out that his behavior followed a definite pattern, too. He favored certain places. He seemed to like a busy drugstore, an automat if there is one, a beer joint, a cigar store. These four, mind you, these four had the highest percentages. Now, I picked out four spots in Borough Park. How do we know when he's going to be there? We don't. We just sit around for hours, for days, maybe, praying. That's the deal. Holy smokes, I've played long shots in my time. All right, but... okay. If anybody here's got a sure thing, I'll go along. Look, we haven't had a sure thing on 880 in 10 years and never will have. Go ahead, Steve. I know it's a long shot, Mac, but... Well, it'd be a shame to, to waste all this research now, wouldn't it? Tell them about Coney Island. Coney Island. 
we found out that every year, practically on the same Sunday in the same month, he went to Coney Island. Let's see, he liked uh, the roller coaster, the fun house, and the whip. So, children, come next Sunday. If we haven't nabbed him by then, we're all going to Coney Island. Goody, goody. <laughs> all right, let's get back to Borough Park. I briefed the cashiers, but you know what that's worth. They just won't be bothered with $1 bills. So we'll have to keep our eyes open for anybody that looks suspicious. Now, you know the kind. The fellow that tries to get out fast doesn't stop to count his change. Or in the automat, the one who gets his nickels, but doesn't stop to eat. And if we have any kind of luck, just the least bit of luck, I know we'll get there. No suspicious looking characters, huh? Only hungry ones. She's a big help. For the first hour, she examined every bill carefully. After that, look at her. They're all the same. I guess it's a lost cause, Max. Not for me. I'm doing research. In an average eight-hour day, that girl handles 18,240 nickels. That's worth knowing. I'll be up the street. Remarkable. She never makes a mistake. Fast as lightning, too. You ought to watch her sometime. Mousy. I ain't passing this stuff no more, Mr. McIntyre. Honest, I ain't. Come on over here. Let me see that last bill you got. This is a five. Are you sure this is it? Sure, sure it is. She gave me four singles and the rest in change. Here it is. Hmm? He's right. I remember it. Mousy, what were you running out like that for? You came in here to eat, didn't you? Well, I always get nervous when I see you, Mr. McIntyre. Okay, Mousy. she give me. Will you got me so nervous? Can you imagine me taking a queer? A guy that was shoving the stuff wouldn't hang around. Would he, Mr. McIntyre? I'll be over at the cigar store. Okay. Hey, I don't lose the boat, do I? Now you know how it feels, Mousy. Lieben kleine Hund. Ah. Yep, it's an 80, all right. Passed one right under my nose. Back somebody right in front of him gave it this bill. Can you remember who it was? The only one I can remember is an old geezer. Nah, it couldn't have been him. He wore the buffaloes off the nickels counting them. You sure? Yeah. He hung around the place too long for his shovel. Well, you better tell the boys he's in the neighborhood. Make sure they're awake. I gotta hand it to you, Steve. I thought you were way off base. 
This is the closest we have. If he sticks to form, he should be in here any minute. That is good, good. Oh, be the same, be the same. your clutches in Borough Park, but I have a distinct feeling he's doomed. I've got the feeling that you're the type that's dogged. The kind that hangs on and on until you... I think I finally got it. Got what? The rest of that limit. Listen. There once was a fellow named Lancelot, whose girlfriends insisted he dance a lot. But his armor had riveting so bad that when pivoting, the poor guy kept losing his pants a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. You stuck to it until you finally got it, didn't you? A boodle of queer. I know a great deal about counterfeiting now. I've read all those books from cover to cover. Incidentally, you never did tell me how you found out who I was. The woman in the art store turned out to be a friend of mine. Oh, say, that's mighty slick. Huh. Counterfeiting wasn't a very healthy occupation in the old days, was it? They used to cut off your ears. Noses, too. You'd like to see that done today, wouldn't you? Well, noses might be overdoing it. <laughs> what are you doing tomorrow? The skipper has to take a flock of kids to the zoo. The skipper? Oh, yes, the old boy. He's quite a character. I promised to go with him. Gee, that's too bad. I have to go to Coney Island on official business. It's in connection with 880. I thought maybe you'd... Say, do you think the skipper would pass up the zoo if I took him to Coney Island? I'm sure he would. He'd love it, and so would the kids, and so would... I... We're going to that movie. We'd better get started. It's amazing how much good money there is in circulation. I've only spotted a couple of Mexican quarters. Did he make a pinch? He's a six-year-old with a nose full of freckles. I think I'll go over and check with George. All right, don't be fast. The lady, come on, step right up. He who hesitates is lost. Pull the expert and win a souvenir. Well, I don't think you can, lady. It's only 25 cents, one quarter. Part of it will be with you in a minute, bud, as soon as I finish with the lady. Ah, go on, it's a fake. It they fixed the fake. scale. Just a minute, mister. You say it's a fake. You say I got a gimmick. Tell you what I'm going to do. No hands on the scales. No hands on this charming lady. I say this little bundle from heaven weighs 114 and a half pounds. All right, ladies, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. This won't hurt a bit. Now, let's see. 115 pounds. Yes, sir, must have some hidden charms, invisible to the naked eye. All right, that's 25 cents, one quarter part of a dollar. There you are, sir, there's your change. What's All right. racket? No racket, mister, no racket. Now, who's next? What do you say? This little girl here. All right, come on, little girl. Here you are, right? They want to go on the roller coaster. The roller coaster? Only 25 
shorter part of an hour. All right. Listen. Uh, yes, sir. All right, kids. Now, watch out. Let me through here, please. I'll be right with you. Yes, sir. You want a dog one, buddy? All right. That's 25 cents and a quarter part of an hour. Yes, sir. Rolling closer. Rolling closer. Coney Island show was a bust. Let's hope we have better luck in Bay Ridge. Look, Steve, the Baroda case is coming to a head. I'm afraid I'm going to have to put George and Oli back on it. Okay. Mac can go on working with you for a while. He's developed into quite a fan of yours. Look, any time 880 gets into your hair, I mean, any time you want to drop it. Drop it? Why? Well, I don't want to see you make a career of it. After all, there are more important things than... There's an irate citizen outside from Coney Island brought in this 880. Says he can give us a perfect description of the passer. No, sir, Thad. I'm not dropping this yet. I break for a sandwich, see, and I'm counting up, and here's this phonus Polonis. Quick as a flash, I know who it is. He's a wise guy, see? There he is. That's him. That's a dirty crook. Called me a fake. How do you like that? He's with his tomato, see? And he says... Sorry. Huh? If it's this crook, he's already under arrest. Thanks for reporting to us. He's a very dangerous character. Huh? 20 years I've been in this Well, business. this is one for the book. But he was there, Thad, he was there. He was in Borough Park on schedule and now Coney Island. At least we know we're on the right track. In fact, we're one jump ahead of him. His next stop is Bay Ridge. If we don't get him in Bay Ridge, we'll get him in Bensonhurst. If not Bensonhurst... Think you can handle this alone, just sure, you and me? Sure, sure. Look, let me handle it. I'll talk to those cashiers. I'll give them a going over they'll never forget. Where are those cards? One of these will be placed in every cash register between Bay Ridge and Canasi. Check. Come on, hurry up. Okay, just a minute. New York. Door doch den Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, just a minute. Right. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. 25 cents more. Just a moment, Morning. How to identify? I just want to look for some. Uh, Twenty-five cents. Thank you, Mary. Oh, this is yours. Just a moment, sir. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute, Mister. Hey, you. Oh, hey, Joe. Joe, come here, quick. Look. Goodbye, Henry. Are you sure you don't want a drink? No, thanks. It's a great help knowing his age and that he's German. I guess it's just a matter of time now. I know you. Where are we going tonight? I can't get away from the idea that he still lives in this neighborhood. Chances are that's where you got those two bills. Don't you ever relax? That old boy, what's his name? Kimmel. Fellow runs a stationery store. Do you know anything about him? Nothing. 
Except he's a sweet old man. You'd suspect anybody, wouldn't you? He's got a German accent. There's a home for the aged around the corner. It's full of old men with German accents. I've already been there. You weren't. I could very easily learn to dislike you. <laughs> Sprechen Sie Deutsch, Herr Muller? It was just a shot in the dark. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yes. Oh, I knew this would happen. I knew once he got started, he'd never quit. What a waste of talent. Well, maybe you'll take the assignment overseas. I told him to think about it. Okay, I'll take another crack at him and call you back. Right, sir. Yes, sir? Is Mr. Buchanan here? He's in the fire room, sir. I'll get him. Steve. Hello, Pat. How are you? Steve, Mac has asked to be taken off the case. After all, there hasn't been an 880 come in in quite a while now. I guess the old fire horse wants some action. I sent him out with Oli this morning. They're rounding up the Baroda mob. They should be coming in any minute now. Anything else? No. How was Washington? Hot. I suppose you'd like to know why the chief sent for me. It's about a deal in France. France? There's a popular demand for the American dollar in Europe right now. Outfit in Marseille figures unsatisfying. Sounds like big stuff. When are you leaving? Well, I don't know. Chief said if I didn't want the assignment, I didn't have to take it. You take it, Steve. This deal probably involves millions. After all, 880 is just... 880 is a counterfeiter. He's breaking the law. If we can't stop him, we might as well close shop. Yes? We have the Baroda's here. Okay. Quiet! Pasquale. I'm not talking to you. Giovanni. Giovanni. Pasquale, te l'ho detto la prima volta. Hey, Steve! Giovanni, Giovanni. Rota mob, we caught them red-handed with a box full of phony tents. Nice work, Mac. We got the plates, too. Come on. Now, listen, I don't want to waste any more time with you guys. I want the truth. United Nations, and you tell them what I said. One week of silence, that's what they need. <laughs> the more jabbering they do, the more arguments they get into. I'm Irish. I know. Morning, morning. Well, somebody's in a big hurry. He's got chipped off this, got to get it fixed. Oh, he loves that figure. Miss Winslow, would you come up with me a minute? I want to show you something. Never remember to lock his door. Look at this room. What happened? Well, that statue was the last. I seen him go, piece by piece. Kept him from being lonely, those things. He used to make up stories about the kind of homes they came from. Always said he was uh, living with a lot of nice boys. Maggie, what did happen? He never really earned enough to live on. He used to get money from his rich cousin. He passed on. But didn't he leave him anything? Guess not. I'll never forget how brave the skipper was in his grief. He just said, I had to bury Cousin Henry. May God rest his soul. Sorry to be so late. Want something? Nothing for me, thanks. I have only a few minutes. Waiter. Yes, sir. How'd you make out? I was a big success. Oh, the check, please. Yes, sir. I saw the manager. He runs our house and one next door. He said Skipper could be a sort of handyman. He's very good at fixing things, you know. He said he'd give him his rent free and $70 a month. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's swell, and Really swell. What's your good news? Oh, something terrific. I couldn't wait to tell you. Well, tell me quick. 
I'm going to France. France? Uh-huh. Big assignment. International stuff. Steve, it's exciting. I've been there since the war. What about 880? I gave him back to the Indians. And do you think there's a chance that, well, that you could wangle a trip over? I don't know. I'll try. We'd be in Paris together. Who's going to work on 880? I don't know and I don't care. It's peanuts compared to this. Make them take you in. Put on the old charm. We'll have a great time. I'll take you around to places in Paris, places you never heard of. The respectable ones, of course. I've only been to the other kind. <laughs> I hope you have liked the Schnecken. I hope you have liked the Schnecken. Oh, uh, yes, yes, very good. I'll have to start brushing up on my French. I think I'll fly. That is, unless we could go together. In that case, I'd prefer a slow boat. <laughs> <laughs> One that would... That isn't German, it's Dutch. I know. Steve, are you sure you gave 880 back to the Indians? Look, I told you before, he's deader than a doornail as far as I'm concerned. Someone once said that a task left undone creates a void that no amount of achievement can fill. Who's the imbecile that dreamed that one up? I am. You found the maid. Oh, you're a darling. It's my last transaction in antiques. You're sweet to remember. On Monday, I start a new career. Suppose you've heard about my new job. The news travels so fast, I thought it was a presidential appointment. How much is this one? They wanted me to start today. I said, start a new career on a Saturday? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Skipper, how much? Hmm? The spinning wheel. Oh, three dollars, same as last. Oh, don't be silly. The other one was five, now here. Oh, when you start something, you always start at the beginning. Yeah, starting a new career on a Saturday is just like, well, sure, I had two dollars here, someplace. I won't take it, Skipper. Oh, they look beautiful together. I insist on paying the same price. You will? As soon as I find the two dollars. My new job calls for a celebration. I'm going out to get some things. Bottle of wine, maybe. You're invited. Skipper. Hmm? Are you sure it was three dollars? Huh? For the first one. Oh, the first one. Yes, yes. I put the change in your purse. I see you're having company for lunch. He's invited, too. Hello, Maggie. C come in. Hi. Your 
You're on time. I like people who are on time. Well, a banquet. You should have warned me I'd have come prepared with a speech. Mr. Buchanan, you always come prepared with a speech. Hey. Usually it's a very pretty one. Ah, that's better. Like after lunch, I'll help you with your French. I had a talk with the chief. I told him to get himself another boy. I'm staying here. You were right. 880 would have haunted me the rest of my life. I'll have to get him out of my system before I tackle anything else. Funny about yesterday. Am I getting sore? I mean, I knew I was kidding myself. But I didn't like your knowing it. How'd you get so smart, hmm? Come here. Let me see. Yep, it's in your eyes. Your eyes are much older and wiser than you are. Steve. If 880 were caught, what would the penalty be? Up to 15 years. He isn't likely to get the maximum, is he? If I ever lay my hands on that old crook, that's just what he will get. That experience in Bay Ridge scared him off for a while, but he'll step out again. They always do. I got him pretty well covered everywhere, including this neighborhood. I got a hunch he'll... What's the matter? Would you like to talk it out with me? Hello? Who? Yes, he's here. It's your office. Hello? Yeah, hello, Thad. Yeah, sure, sure. Just a couple of blocks from me. I know where it is. This may be it, Thad. Thanks. I knew it. I knew we couldn't hold out. They just caught someone passing an 880 in the grocery store. They got him down to the police station now. I'll phone you, give you a play-by-play -play account. Your husband will feel better after a little rest. Oh, can't I? He's sleeping it off. Where's the, uh... Right here. Hello, son. Hi. What's your name? Bobby. Where'd you get this, Bobby? What in the crap came from Johnny Sloan. He said I was the McCoy. You know where Johnny lives? Sure. I'll take you in the prowl car. Fine. Thanks a lot, Lieutenant. Quite all right. Come on, Bobby. Let's go see Johnny. Good boy. I got it from Willie. Speak up. Answer the gentleman. Gave him all my bottle tops, my special ones. From Willie, huh? Yes, sir. Thanks, Jenny. I try it, see? I figures it's stage money, so I starts making deals with them. There it is, that's a house. Hold on to this press, Sergeant.
Right here it was. The fellows are looking for me, see? And I'm hiding back of this bush cart. Then this dog comes along and starts scraping away like mad. Pretty soon I see a handle, so I start yanking on it. What kind of a dog was it? One of them shaggy ones. You know, they come with hair in their eyes. Sort of gray one. Thanks, Vicky. You go on back to the car. Stupid old beggar. See that Mickey gets home, Sergeant. Take good care of the press for me. I'll pick it up later. I've been waiting for you to come back. I kept telling myself I'd have to be sensible about this. I'd have to be practical. I can't, Steve. He's a very old man. One of the kindest human beings I've ever known. Steve, he can't survive a long jail term. He's a counterfeiter. No matter what you or I think of him, he robbed people. Reach into their pockets and rub them. Oh, it's you, Anne. Wonderful. Oh, you're ahead of me. Wonderful. Thank you, man. Wonderful. I had a lot of trouble to get the wine I wanted. I said to the man, I why, it's Mr. Buchanan. Now, wasn't that nice of him to accept my invitation? Yes, indeed. I... Yes, I said to the man, I said. Now, I... Oh, where's my corkscrew? 
Oh, oh, thank you, Len. Thank you. Here, here, here. You, you open it. I'll get the glasses. Yes. Yes, I said to the man, I said, when I ask for Lieb Frau Mulch, I want to... I'll get the glasses. Yes. I said to the man, when I ask for Lieb Frau Mulch, I want... Leave round milk, I said. Not vinegar, but a fancy label. Huh? I'm with the United States Secret Service, Skipper. Oh. He didn't know he was dealing with a connoisseur of fine wines. Skipper. Huh? Have you been passing counterfeit one dollar bills? Counterfeit bills? Oh, yes. Yes. For quite some time now. Wait till you taste this. Secret service. Well, well. Oh, yes, for quite some time. Well, here we go. Down the hatch. Ah, oh, yes, that's it. Once you taste leaf Skipper? Skipper? You'll have to come down to the office with me. The office? Hmm. Yes, yes, your office, of course. You'll probably want to ask me a lot of questions. Well, let me see, there'll be some things to do. Oh, yes, please. I don't suppose they'd let him... Oh, no, he'd only interrupt us. He can be a nuisance sometimes, especially in strange places. Yeah. I'll take care of him, Skipper. Will you? Thank you. Thank you. In case I'm detained, he likes ground meat at least once a day. You need a lawyer. I have a friend. Lawyer? Oh, no, no, no. We don't want to bother anybody. Mr. Buchanan and I can dispose of this without outsiders. Yes. Yes, there's a lot of detail to a thing like this. All sorts of forms to fill out. I hope it won't take long. Wouldn't like it to spoil your evening. Then. You stay here and behave. True. Here we've got 880. Yes, he's inside. Hello? Yes, Mr. Reynolds, it's true. He's been caught. No, sir, I wouldn't say that. Hello, Mac. This is 880? Why, this is the old geezer from Borough Park. Yeah, and our guest in Coney Island. They've been asking a lot of questions. You might be able to think of some, too. Brother, I could ask a million. Congratulations. Thanks. Tell me this, Mr. Miller. Did it ever occur to you that this was like stealing? That every person who accepted a counterfeit from you suffered a loss? Did you get that, Miss Gallagher? Oh, I was afraid he was talking too fast. Uh, what was the question? I was talking about the people who got stuck with your bills. I wanted to know... Oh, yes, yes. Well, they didn't amount to much. I never gave anyone more than one bill. Made sure about that. You mean you planned it that way? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Then I'd always buy something from them. They could make a profit on that. So the loss wasn't too great. Less than a dollar. I'm sure nobody minded it. Mr. Miller, I understand you were in the Navy for many years. Machinist. First class. You were eligible to enter a veteran's home. Now, instead of committing a crime against your government, wouldn't you have proven a better citizen if you had... Oh, well... no. Goodness, no. I thought about that. I looked up the records. It costs the government 82.70 a month for each person. 
I didn't need over 40, 50. Saved the government a lot of money. Yes, indeed, quite a bit. He's all yours, Steve. Take him down to the commissioners for arraignment. Come on, Skipper. Oh, I want to thank all of you. You've been very kind to me. I try then, but it was no use. He told me I was a nice man, would I please stop annoying him with silly questions? I know. He insists on pleading guilty. I even had difficulty getting him to accept bail. Shall I ask him to wait? Yes, please. Aren't you even going to court? Well, I can't force myself on him. Thanks, Jimmy. Do you know anything about Judge O'Neill? Yes. Look, Ann, you may as well be prepared. He's going to have to go to jail. The only hope I had was to cut the sentence down to, well, maybe a year or two. Well, a year or two wouldn't be so awful, but I'm afraid... A lot will depend on the Secret Service office, how hard they push it. Yes, I know that. Buchanan could help. Yes, he could. Thank you again, Jimmy. There were so many embarrassing questions, I had to get out of Washington. And all I've heard here is what a quaint character he is. That nobody knows what to do about him. If you saw him, Chief, he's such a harmless... Harmless? Officer. The man who drove us crazy for 10 years, harmless? Well, I'm a quaint character myself. I know what to do about him. We'll see to it that he's prosecuted to the fullest, like any other counterfeiter. Where's Buchanan? I hope he hasn't been bitten by the bug. I don't think so. Well, where is he? Haven't seen him for the last few days. He asked for some time off. Better turn up in that courtroom this morning. He'll be there, Chief. Don't worry. Let's get some breakfast. United States Court of the Southern District, New York, is now in session. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. The United States of America versus William Miller. The United States of America? My goodness. The Secret Service clearly established during the hearing that the bills the defendant admitted passing and those turned into them over a period of years bear the same serial number. Your Honor, this case has cost the United States Secret Service more time and money than any other case in its entire history. I would suggest that the defendant... Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I would suggest that the defendant pay a little more attention. Uh, Miss Winslow is a very good friend of mine, sir. This is more important. Yes, sir. Before I impose sentence, Mr. Miller, I'll give you another opportunity to get counsel. If you wish, I'll agree to a postponement. If Your Honor, please, may I approach the bench? I've been asked by his friends to represent the defendant. And although he insists he doesn't need me, with the court's approval, I would like to present certain facts for your consideration. Mr. Miller. Yes, sir. Will you please tell me just why you feel you have no need for counsel? Well, it seemed to me, sir, it seemed to me he was going to a heap of trouble for nothing. Aren't you disturbed that you might have to go to jail? Jail? Never been there, Judge. Can't be disturbed about a place I've never been to. You can see for yourself, Your Honor, that despite his objection... Probably a lot of very nice people there. Go ahead. I was going to say, Your Honor, that despite his objection, someone should speak in his That's behalf. There's one no. thing that does disturb me, Judge. Yes, what is it? The thing that man read out about the United States of America versus me. I'm afraid that's not true. 
goodness, the United States of America. That's a tremendous amount of people to have against you, isn't it? I've got a lot of friends, Judge. Some of them are right here in this court. I'm sure they're not against me. With the court's permission, I'd like to continue. Perhaps you'd better get his permission. Oh, let him go ahead, Judge. He's got it on his chest. Let him get it off. Proceed. You have his permission. Well, Your Honor, he's pleaded guilty, so there's nothing more to be said about that. But I respectfully call the court's attention to the fact that the defendant is an old man, 73 years of age. Mr. Lee, I'm sorry for a man 73 years old. But I have always dealt severely with counterfeiters as a matter of public policy. I see no reason to depart from that policy merely because of his age. Anything else, Mr. Lee? Yes, Your Honor, there is. I think intent should be considered. The circumstances under which he began his counterfeiting. He's a junk dealer. Sure. Now, it's quite possible that one day, among the things he picked up, was this printing press and those plates. Yeah. Well, naturally, they aroused his curiosity, and he decided to experiment with them, no. just as the boy who found them in his backyard experimented. Yet no one would think of prosecuting that boy. No. Now, Your Honor, I don't contend no, because this no, man is... No, no, Mr. Lee, you're wrong. Wrong. He's mistaken, Judge. Quite mistaken. I bought that printing press. And those plates? I made those plates myself. Yes, indeed. It took me quite some time. Not easy, you know. No. But I wouldn't want you to have the wrong impression, Judge. No. Sorry to contradict you, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Your Honor. What do you recommend? Hmm? No recommendation. Where is... Uh... Buchanan, where's the Secret Service man who, uh... Is Buchanan present? Hey, Your Honor. What do you recommend? I've never had any sympathy for counterfeiters, Your Honor. I don't have any now. I agree with the court. The counterfeiters should be dealt with as severely as possible. Thank you, Mr. Buchanan. If it please the court. There is something I would like to add. Yes? Well, the defendant is guilty of a crime. I, I don't think he should be treated as a criminal, as an enemy of society. What he did wasn't because of greed or because he, because he wanted to get rich quick. He printed just a few bills at a time, only when he needed money badly. And then, not always for himself. You arrested this man. Are you now pleading for him? I realize it's unusual, Your Honor. But the defendant is an unusual man. Ask his neighbors, ask his many friends if they think the skipper is an enemy of society. I ask them. They know him only as a kind, gentle, honest human being. You saw an example of it only a moment ago when Mr. Lee tried to defend him. It just wouldn't occur to the skipper not to tell the truth. Or even let anybody color it for him. You don't often find a man with that kind of honesty. Your Honor, government agents are trained to be skeptical. I wasn't satisfied with my own opinion or the opinion of his neighbors. I investigated his past to see if he was engaged in any other criminal activities. I'm happy to say I couldn't find any. But I did run across something which you might want to consider. The defendant spent a good part of his life in the United States Navy. And in 1918, when he was 41 years of age, he received a decoration for bravery. I have a photostatic copy of the citation here. In case you're interested. You seem to have gone to a great deal of trouble for this man. Why? That's hard to say, Your Honor. Maybe I was influenced by something I read the other day. It was in a book I happened to pick up. Justice is too often administered by fixed rules, without regard for the feelings of the human mind or the charity in the human heart. A book you happened to pick up? Yes, Your Honor. I was the author of that book. 
Yes, Your Honor. Despite the quotation from my book, I still believe that counterfeiters, whoever they are, must be sent to jail. We cannot make an exception in this case or in any other case. This man broke the law. However, in view of the defendant's extreme age and uh, the other considerations, the sentence will be kept at a minimum. Nine months. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Thank you indeed. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Mr. Clee. Thank you, Mr. Lee. In court, huh? Oh. I've been reminded that a sentence of nine months does not provide for parole. It has been suggested that it be changed to a year and a day so that the defendant could get off in four months. The sentence is changed to a year and a day. Thank you, sir. Skipper. Oh, for heaven's sake. I have also been reminded that the sentence must be accompanied by a fine. We will make this nominal, too. One dollar fine. Dollar fine. Oh. Skipper, maybe you'd better let me pay. Oh, no. No. Let's go. Skipper. Goodbye. I'll come to see you very soon. <laughs> 